Hello, my name is Maria Dias and I am the Marine Science Coordinator at BirdLife International. My work at BirdLife is to compile the scientific evidence to help preventing the extinction of albatrosses and other seabird species. On the 19th of June, we are celebrating the Albatross Day. And why do we need an Albatross Day? Albatrosses are very beautiful and charismatic species, but deserve, they deserve more of our attention because they are also highly threatened with extinction. Of the 22 species of albatrosses, 21 are considered to be threatened or near threatened with extinction. A good example is the waved albatross. It is a species from the Pacific Ocean and the, most of the population breeds in a single island in the Galapagos. And this species is considered critically endangered. Well, albatrosses can be considered marine animals. They depend on marine ecosystems to find the food that they need to survive, like fish or squid or crustaceans. And then they, they have an incredible capacity to fly, uh, assisted with the wind. So they are able to cover incredible distances when they, 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 they are at sea. And a good example is the grey-headed albatross. So it's a population, the popul it's a species that is considered endangered with extinction. And the example that I will give you, it's of the population that breeds in the South Georgia. And when they finish the breeding period, they start this incredible long distance migration all the way around Antarctica. Sometimes they, f they stop to forage in more productive waters, rich waters. But then they keep going all the way around Antarctica, basically in the direction of the, 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 the wind, and then to come back to the same colony in the next uh, year, in the following year. So these are movements that they do during the, the noon breeding season. But even during the breeding season, for example, when they are uh, in the incubation period, one bird stays in the nest to incubate the egg, and the other one goes to find food, to forage for food, and they, for example, they are able to go to travel all the way down to the Antarctic Peninsula, and then they come back to the colony. And this trip here, it looks like small compared with the other, of course, incredible migration, but in these trips, they cover more than 3,000, 4,000 kilometers. That is the same as imagine if you live in London and you decide to go to find your food, your dinner in Lisbon, and then you come back. So that is the scale of the, this kind of movements. So how do we know all these things and the, these movements? So we've been studying albatrosses for at least the last 20 years. And uh, the migration, for example, we study using these very, very small devices that we call geolocators that we attach to the ring of the birds. And then the ring is attached to the leg. And then the birds are released, they go. And then after one or two years, they come back to the colony and we are able to collect the data and download the data. So to collect the device and download the data. During the breeding season, because of course they do shorter trips, we use a slightly different type of device that is a kind of a GPS, like a normal GPS, but smaller, um, that we waterproof and then we attach to the tail feathers or to the, to the back of the birds. And again, we release when they come back to the colony after a few weeks, uh, we are able to download the data and, and understand and map all these incredible movements. So it is by studying the foraging ecology of albatrosses that we are now able to understand more of one of the biggest problems of albatrosses nowadays, that is the bycatch in fisheries. So when they are out at sea, they, ver they are very often attracted by fishing vessels like trawlers or longliners. And that is because they are looking for an easy meal. Sometimes, for example, they are attracted by the, the bait in the hook of the longliners. And then very often they get hooked and then they die. And bycatch is in fact one of the biggest problems for albatrosses nowadays, with uh, 21 of the 22 species somehow affected by this problem. But albatrosses are also terrestrial animals. They depend on isolated islands to breed, and in these islands they very often encounter problems like we what we call invasive predator species or invasive alien species. So these are species like, for example, rats or mice that are not native to those islands, so they were brought with humans. 
and they became predators of the chicks of the albatrosses. And of course, they increased the mortality of the chicks and decreased the breeding success. The problem of invasive predator species, it's affecting not only albatrosses, but many other seabird species in the world. So we, in a study that we did in bird life, to understand the, the impact of different kind of human activities and impacts on, on, on seabirds, we, we were able to, to see, to, to conclude that half of the seabird species in the world are somehow affected by these invasive predator species. And here you can see the number of different seabird species affected by predators, by these kind of predators. And then finally, we have climate change. So maybe most of you saw those incredible, shocking images in the last BBC series, Seven Worlds, One Planet, with the, the tiny albatross cheeks affected by the very strong winds. And so climate change is not only increasing the frequency of, the, of this kind of extreme weather events, but is also for example, changing the oceanographic conditions around the colonies, so decreasing the food availability for albatrosses, uh, and sometimes also increasing the frequency of diseases, that is another big problem for albatrosses. So in summary, um, because albatrosses depend both on terrestrial and marine environments uh, to live, they are affected by problems in, in both systems. So they are, most species, 95% of the species are affected by bycatch. More than 60% of the species are affected by invasive predators. Almost 40% by climate change. And more than 20% um, by diseases. So in many cases, these threats act in a cumulative way. So the same species is affected by more than one threat at the same time. And that is the case of the waved albatross, our first example, that is a species that is in fact affected by all these problems at the same time, and that's why it's probably considered critically endangered with extinction. So what can we do to help? Well, if you like to eat seafood, make sure that you buy seafood from sustainable sources, especially those that pay a special attention to the problem of bycatch. Another thing that you can do is support an NGO that is addressing the problem of invasive species in islands, because this is a big problem, not only for albatrosses, but also for other seabirds and other bird species as well, and other animals. And finally, engage in this global human fight against climate change. And you can also start by celebrating the Albatross Day with us by sharing this video with your family and your friends in your social network. Thank you very much.